It's that time again, everyone. It's turkey time. And it has been quite some time since I've done some Thanksgiving reviews. As you can see, my <laughs> my pilgrim hat has seen better days. This is what happens when, well, I should say when you're on lots of expeditions, discovering new lands. However, this is what happens in modern times when your hat is just kind of stored in a closet for years without being used. So I want, I want to start out this Thanksgiving season with uh, a movie I've never seen, I had never seen before. And tonight's review is of Hudson's Bay, and it came out in 1940. And it's funny because we just saw a Paul Muni film, and I promise this wasn't planned, but this movie stars Paul Muni, and it also has, um, it has quite the cast, honestly. Um, it has Laird Krieger, and he plays sort of his sidekick. You'll recognize him from a great movie, The Lodger, which probably next Halloween I'll be reviewing that. That's a great kind of spooky film. He plays Gooseberry in this. Uh, Paul Muni, he plays a historical figure named Pierre Radisson. Uh, we also have John Sutton in this movie who plays, uh, he, he was an ex-lord from England, Lord Edward. Uh, Vincent Price, uh, he always pops up sort of in these early 40s movies. That's like, wow, that's kind of a random movie for him. He plays King Charles II of England. And we have Jean Tierney in this movie. This is her second movie to be made. Uh, she's the love interest in the film. And Nigel Bruce, of course, everyone knows him as Watson uh, in Sherlock Holmes films. This is, was a 20th, 20th century Fox movie directed by Irving Pitchell, or Pickle, probably Pitchell. Um, he, uh, we have seen Tomorrow is Forever. We've reviewed that in our channel. Great, great, beautiful film. Uh, this movie, very different from that. I'll, I'll start off by saying, because this film, it's a historical drama, but it's a goofy one. It's, uh, it's so, it has a lot of comedy in this movie, uh, but it is a historical drama. Uh, of course, it's with, with these older films, please, you can't, you can't be too harsh on them with uh, getting history right. You, you just can't. You, if you do that, you're going to just slam these films to death. Um, so let's get to the plot. This film is, it takes place in 1667, around that time. And Paul Muni, he is this Frenchman. He is a rogue, uh, as they say, because he doesn't really identify with the French government and he doesn't identify with the British government. He just identifies with whoever will help him get to his goal. Uh, and it starts out with Pierre Radisson. I'll just call him Radisson from here on out. It starts with him in and in a, he is with his buddy Gooseberry. And they're looking for someone, some noblemen, to help fund his expedition to the Hudson Bay. And it's supposedly, uh, it hasn't been claimed yet by either government. And it's a beautiful land uh, just waiting to be picked, snatched up uh, with the help of uh, Indians, with the help of the uh, native people of the land. Which, honestly, when, I'm, when I look for films for Thanksgiving time, I really loved looking for the films in which natives work alongside with uh, people from the west western world or I, from europe I, I love movies where we see them working together of course uh, there was tons of fighting between the two but it, it was those peaceful moments between the two you know in this movie it's the the fur trapping the fur um, getting the furs in canada that really brought the them together and they worked together and Radisson's character really shows that uh, but we'll get more into that once we get more into the plot so they end up in jail <laughs> because they are, are just really annoying um, but they're funny don't get me wrong they're, they can be annoying at sometimes because when they want something they want it and they end up getting in a fight with these noblemen and they end up in jail which is where they meet John Sutton's character, this Lord Edward who was banished from England. And basically, he they, they help each other. They're like, okay, I'm going to, um, uh, Radisson, they all, they escape from this jail. 
and they say, Radisson says, I'm going to show you this. And he has the thing about Paul Muni, of course, always doing different accents, playing a different character from a different culture. Um, then this, his French accent is just so good. In fact, there are times where I don't, I don't even know what he's saying because his French, his French accent is just so good. Um, in fact, he sings in French in this movie and it's very, he was just really good at, uh, picking up on, uh, how people speak English when English isn't their first language. Uh, I know that because I have a lot of, uh, friends and loved ones from other countries. And he's just so good at that, at broken English is what I'm trying to say. Um, so they, he, Radisson, he shows Lord, um, Lord Edward, this Hudson Bay and it's beautiful. And honestly, the it's in, this film's in black and white, but when we look at Hudson Bay, it's, it is stunning. And basically they're like, okay, we're going to make so much money off of fur trapping, but the only way they're going to get to do that is by working with uh, the natives, working with the, the local Indians. So I want to note this scene where they are, um, they're basically in a, a TP like structure and they're getting to know each other. And it's a beautifully photographed scene because there's the fire in the TP and uh, you can see their faces, the flame flickering off their faces. And Lord Edward. Uh, you know, he's not as trustworthy with the natives as um, Radisson's character. Radisson truly respects uh, the locals, the local natives. And uh, we see this later when they're negotiating, how much are we going to pay the Indians for helping us? And Radisson is like, look, we're going to treat them basically as equals. And Lord, Ed this is such a powerful conversation that they have. Um, I can't believe it's from 1941 because, of course, Native Americans were struggling for rights uh, up until like the 80s, 90s, and even today because there's this scene where Lord Edward basically says, there's, he calls them savages. We're not going to treat these savages as equals. And Radisson, in a beautiful, elegant way, Muni says, look, your man, they man too. So what's the problem? Why are we going to treat them different? And Lord Edward, this stuck up British nobleman, ex nobleman, uh, he just doesn't get it. Uh, but it's a beautiful scene where we're, we are, we're all just like, you know, what? I'm on Paul Muni's side in this movie. Uh, he's the true hero. So they have a falling out with the local French government, which is why, uh, Radisson is a rogue because it's his government and he says you know what we're not going to get what we want here with the French so let's go to let's go to England and see what we can get there and uh, this is when we finally see um, we finally see Jean Tierney's character and it's interesting because uh, she's second build in this movie and is only her second movie she's hardly in the film and she is higher up than John Sutton, which I think is, it doesn't really make sense just because John Sutton is basically in this movie just as much as Paul Muni is. Um, and we also meet Vincent Price, who plays King Charles II. And it's awkward because uh, Lord, um, Lord, oh, God, I keep forgetting his name, Edward, he was banished from the country so he has to sort of make up with Vincent Price and uh, Vincent Price is always good as sort of that sophisticated man and he plays a perfect king honestly and uh, so they make up and they they start planning this adventure to back to the Hudson Bay to claim this land for England and while planning that, uh, there's a scene where Paul Muni, again, he has to stick up for the natives. All these British noblemen, you know, let's just let's just give them, uh, basically, let's give them alcohol uh, and see, you know, they'll be happy with that. And Paul Muni is like, no, we will not be doing that because we are going to treat them with respect. If you don't treat them, these people as equals and I'm walking out of here and he does walk out 
And this is when Nigel Bruce's character says, look, 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 you know, you're in charge. We're going to do everything how you want it, Radisson. So basically, uh, they're, they side with him and they go back to the Hudson Bay this time with um, Gene Tierney's brother, who's a complete uh, aristocratic snob. He is awful. And this is when we get to a scene where um, he is extremely, you know, he calls them savages too, sees them as lower people. He provides alcohol to some of the natives and they drink it and they end up killing another group of Indians, which is going to spark a war. Uh, Of course, I don't know how historically accurate all this is, but Paul Muni's character Radisson says, look, we need to do, we need to av- avoid bloodshed. So we need to let the natives take a life. We need them to kill this white man. This is crazy because this white man is one of the king's uh, people from his court. Uh, he's uh, basically a lord. Um, and I wasn't ex- I was expecting there to be some crazy getaway where he gets away, but. He's put on an execution post to a firing squad, and he's murdered in cold blood, essentially. Uh, so they have to go back to England, and it's a dramatic scene between Lord Edward and uh, Radisson because, of course, our Lord Edward is in love with Jean Tierney, so <laughs> he basically just aided in killing her brother. So when they go back... There's this final uh, drama between the two. I'm not going to go too in-depth on how the movie unfolds at the end. Um, But there are a lot of goofy fight scenes in this film, Uh, (laughs) which, uh, you know, it's interesting watching Paul Muni in these scenes. But, uh, you know, I guess it's some comical relief to the film. Uh, his honestly, the best scenes in the film are the ones with he and uh, Gooseberry, uh, Laird Krieger's uh, character. I love their scenes; they're super funny because Gooseberry is this uh, this fat man who's just a brute who just beats everyone up so easily. Um, but I love those scenes. And note the scene where <laughs> this this movie is extremely ro- overly romantic. And uh, there's a scene where uh, basically Lord Edward is like, you know, how about you get married one day and you have a loved one? And uh, Radisson's like, yes, I do. My love, my one love is the Hudson Bay, (laughs) my wife. And it's just, it's so outrageously romantic. Um, And let's see. Interestingly enough, Enough, Par- Paramount was thinking about doing uh, a, some sort of movie on the Hudson Bay, but when they found out that 20th Century Fox was doing this, they backed off from it. This movie did make quite a bit of money. Uh, it made ninety about $90,000 for Fox, which is awesome. I have some, or I have first a picture from the film. We see Gene Tierney with John Sutton, a very young Jean Tierney. And she has an interesting snippet. This is her autobiography. She said, within three months, I had completed my first film and begun a a second Hudson's Bay opposite Paul Muni. Muni, twice an Academy Award winner, had not renewed his contract at Warner's. Now, as a free agent, he had been free to accept the script shown him, shown him by Fox, where he had begun his career back in 1928. Quote, every actor, he said, wants to, be an independ- wants to be independent enough to turn down those parts he does not care to play. End quote. And then Gene Tierney says, in time, I would know exactly what he meant. One of the minor characters in Hudson's Bay was played by Nigel Bruce, the Dr. Watson of Sherlock Holmes's fame. One day, when the scenes had not gone well, Nigel crooked his finger and said to me, Come here, my little darling, and let me press you to me. A lovable old fellow, I think he sensed I was frightened and wanted to, and so wanted to succeed. 
Uh, the film was the occasion of my first professional kiss, supposedly a big moment in the life of any young actress. I can assure you I have no special memory of it, even though the scene with John Sutton had to be shot three times. I don't believe the kiss made much of an impression on John either. Several weeks later, I was made up as Ellie Mae for the filming of Tobacco Road, and John walked right past me in the commissary without recognizing me. So that's a cute little story from her autobiography. So I'm, I give this movie a two and a half stars. You know, it's nothing crazy. I'll probably never see this movie again. It's a fun movie to watch at Thanksgiving time. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's above average, not quite this is good, but uh, it's, it's worth a watch. It's a fun film to watch at least one time, and I think Thanksgiving time is the perfect time to see it.